Hi, and welcome to this course about Django, the most popular web development framework for the most popular programming language in the world, Python. My name is Maximilian Schwarzmuller, and I will be your instructor in this course. And together with you, I will walk through Django in great depth. I'm going to teach you Django A to C, and we're going to dive into all the core features that make up Django. We're going to dive into them from the ground up, so you don't need to know anything about Django to get started. All you need for this course is some basic Python and web development knowledge. Though you don't need to be an expert there, you should just know the basics. But I will have a separate lecture later in this first section where I do talk about these course requirements in greater detail. Now, in this course, as I said, we're going to dive into Django in great depth, and we're going to do that in both theory, step-by-step, -step, learning all the core concepts, but also in practice by building a complete project throughout this course, a complete blog from the ground up, applying everything we learned, including an administration area for us, the owner. And we're going to do that to not just see all the concepts in theory and understand them there, but to then solve real problems with what we learned, because I believe that this is super important to fully understand a topic. Now, this is what we're going to do, and we're going to do that in great depth, including deployment, by the way, which is often skipped. But in this first section, we're going to get started with the essentials about this course. We're going to dive into what exactly Django is, what its core concepts and philosophies are. I'm going to walk you through the course content in greater detail and the course requirements. And then in the next section already, we're going to get started with setting up a Django project. And then we're quickly going to dive into all the core features. That's the course. Thanks for joining. I'm super excited to get started with you. And therefore, without any further ado, let's dive right in and let's learn Django. So what exactly is Django? Django is a web development framework for Python. So it is for the Python language and it allows us to build websites, web projects with Python. Now, we still will use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for the part our users see for the front end of websites, but for everything that happens on the server, so on the remote computer out there in the web, which handles the incoming requests and sends back the responses, for all of that, we use Django, or we can use Django, and in this course we will, to handle everything there and to run our entire business logic there with help of Django. But what exactly is a framework? A framework in the end is, is a module. It's a third party library, which you install on your system. And the idea is that it has a bunch of utility functionalities and, and methods you can use, and that it solves a lot of problems for you so that you don't have to solve them, like managing sessions and authentication and file uploads, parsing incoming requests and sending back responses, so that you as a developer don't have to focus on those nitty gritty details but that instead you can focus on what makes up your website, that you can focus on the core business logic, what earns you money, because you typically don't want to solve all those side details. You don't want to reinvent the wheel all the time, and you don't want to do the technical side of handling requests and working with the database and managing sessions. You want to instead use these tools to then do what your website is about. You want to decide which data to store and when data should be stored, but you don't want to implement it technically. That's why we use a framework. But it's a framework specifically and not just called a library because it does not just give us all these tools to, to use, but it also gives us a clear guidance, a clear set of rules on how to use these tools. And that starts with setting up a, a Django project, as you will see later. We have a tool for that as well, and it will give us a project which has a certain structure that we should use for any kind of Django project. And whenever we then add a feature, like working with a database, storing data, we do this in a certain way. And this course will, of course, teach you all these ways of doing things. And there is a clear path when you use Django on how certain things have to be done. And that's a good thing because that means that you don't have to think about how to best do something. You know how to do it because there is one clear path with Django and then it's just up to you to decide which kind of data should be stored, when it should be stored and so on. 
And that's why we use Django and what Django is. We use it because it takes a lot of work away from us and allows us to focus on our core business logic. And therefore it is the most popular web development framework for Python. Now, Django is built for Python 3.x, so for that latest version of Python, and it follows a batteries included approach, which basically means that it has a solution for everything. You don't need to install a ton of extra libraries and packages to then build a real project. Instead, Django covers all these typical problems which you face when building a website, and it has a solution built in for those problems. And in this course, we're going to see a lot of these typical problems and which solution Django then offers to us. And it still is extensible and customizable. I also want to emphasize this. Just because we have a clear set of rules and a clear path, and just because it has this batteries included approach, does not mean that you wouldn't be able to customize it and fine tune it. You absolutely can, and we absolutely will in this course. You can still control everything. There is just a clear path on how to do something, but when you walk down that path, it's up to you how you want to walk it down, and you will have plenty of options on customizing everything, as you will see throughout the course. So it gives you the best of both worlds, a clear path and a clear set of rules, and still a lot of flexibility, which you of course need, because not every website is the same, not every web project is the same. Now, last but not least, I also want to emphasize that Django is not just some small framework for side projects, but that you can really use it to build websites of any size with it. No matter if that is a small side project or a large enterprise level application, you can build it with Django. And in this course, we're going to dive into all the core features you need to know to use Django. So that is Django and that's why it's pretty awesome. So this course is about Django, as you probably heard by now, but what are the course prerequisites? What do you need to know to, to get the most out of this course? In the end, this course has two main prerequisites. And the first prerequisite is Python. You need basic Python knowledge. You absolutely don't need to be an expert. You don't need to have five years of Python experience, but you need to know the basics the core syntax of the language, the core ideas of the language. That is really important. This course will not teach you Python, it will teach you Django. And therefore, no Django knowledge is required at all. So basic Python knowledge, but no Django knowledge. Now, since it's a, a web development course in the end, since we learn how to use Django to build websites, you also need basic web development knowledge. Now with that, I also don't mean that you need to be a web development expert or need 10 years of experience, but you should know how the web generally works with requests and responses. And you should know that there is HTML, CSS and JavaScript involved for the front end, because we're not going to learn that in this course. This course is about what happens on the server because that is where our Django code runs. And you don't need to be an expert in either of these languages, not at all, but you should know what all these things do, how they are connected and how the web generally works. In this course, you don't need to write any HTML, CSS or JavaScript code, at least no complex code. I will often provide that code to you or we write it together, but you should have that core understanding of how the web works. And that's all. So regarding Django, no knowledge is required, basic Python and web dev knowledge is required though. So now that we know what Django is and what it's about and what the prerequisites are, let's talk about this course. What's in this course? This course has three main pillars, I would say. We have the foundation, all the core concepts we're going to dive in. We're then going to dig into some more advanced concepts as well. And we're also not just going to learn all these things in theory, but we're also going to apply them on a real project. And we're going to dive into real problems, which you will face if you build a real website. Uh, something which is often skipped in other courses or videos and which is important though. Something which is important because obviously you learn something to build something real with it, I guess. So in the foundation, we're going to start with setting up a project and understanding what was created there, understanding how this project works in general. 
We're going to dive into core features like setting up URLs and routes and, and views and what these things are. These terms don't need to tell you much right now. We're going to learn all of that in the course. We're going to learn how to use templates to render HTML code, dynamic HTML code, how to work with static files. And we're also going to learn how to work with data and a database, how to use Django's model feature for doing that conveniently, and how to connect data and set up relations. Now that's the foundation. We're also, however, going to learn how to work with forums and user input and how to do that in different ways and different uh, complexities, if you want to call it like this. We're going to dive into a concept called class-based views, which won't tell you anything right now, but which will make a lot of sense later once we get there. We're going to learn how to deal with file uploads, how to store them, and how to store them in different ways even. And we're going to learn how to work with sessions, how to add an administration site with authentication to our website, but also how to store other user data in sessions. And then to make that all more realistic, we have tons of small examples and mini projects and demos, but then we also have one big course project, a real project building a blog from the ground up with an administration area for us and a user-facing frontend with various features. And we're going to build that in great detail and we're also going to deploy it. And we're not just going to put it on some server in some unrealistic way. Instead, we'll have an in-depth deployment section in this course where I really dive into deployment in depth, as I just said, I guess. And I show you different aspects of this as well. When it comes to serving static files, we're going to use a real database, PostgreSQL, and much, much more. And that's what's in the course. Also, of course, check out the full curriculum. You can already see it to see what we're going to learn. But this is, in a nutshell, what this course will be about. And this course is really built to be taken in order. So my strong recommendation is that you simply take it lecture by lecture to get the most out of this course. And speaking of that, I got a couple of other hints related to that as well. This Django course is packed with content. And therefore, I actually have two options, two paths for you, which you can follow when going through that course. The first option, the first path you can take is the standard approach, as I like to call it. And this approach is my clear recommendation. This is how I recommend that you take this course. With this approach, you simply take the course step by step, starting in lecture one and section one, which you already viewed by now, I guess. And then you simply move through that course, lecture after lecture, section after section. All these sections and concepts build up on each other. And therefore, if you go through the course like this, then you will get the most out of it and you will learn about all those key Django features step by step in depth. Now, at the end of this course, you will find a Django summary course section. And this section then is optional for you. It sums up all the core Django features, of course, not as in depth as the rest of this course. There is a reason why the summary section only has a few hours, whereas the overall course has more than 20 hours. But this section is great as a summary module after you took the course, to quickly recap all the key concepts again, or to come back to if you took a pause from Django for a couple of months and you quickly want to dive back into all those key concepts again. This summary section at the end of the course can help you in that case. Now, the alternative approach of taking this course is that you skip the main course and you jump right away into that summary module. I call this approach the summary approach because it is meant for people who are in a hurry. If you got limited time, if you don't want or you can't take the entire course step by step at this point of time, then you can jump ahead to that summary module, skip the rest of the course for now and learn about the essence of Django and get a good overview of Django with that summary module. And you can then always come back to the main course and go through the entire course step by step in the future once you have more time at your disposal. These are the two main ways of taking this course. Simply choose the one which best fits your requirements.